Accessibility. Accessibility is a general term used to describe the degree to which a product, e.g. device, service, environment, is accessible by as many people as possible. Accessibility can be viewed as the ability to access the functionality and possible benefit of some system or entity. Accessibility is often used to focus on people with disabilities and their right to access entities, often through the use of assistive technology. Several definitions of accessibility do refer directly to access-based individual rights laws and regulations. Products or services designed to meet these regulations are often termed easy access or accessible. Accessibility is not to be confused with usability, which is used to describe the extent to which a product, e.g. device, service, environment, can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in a specified context of use. Accessibility is strongly related to universal design when the approach involves direct access. This is about making things accessible to all people, whether they have a disability or not. However, products marketed as having benefited from a universal design process are often actually the same devices customized specifically for use by people with disabilities. An alternative is to provide indirect access by having the entity support the use of a person's assistive technology to achieve success, e.g. screen reader. Contents 1. Disabilities 2. Transportation 2.1. Accessibility planning 2.2. Low floor 3. Housing 4. Telecommunications and IT access 5. Meeting and conference access 6. Test accessibility 7. See also 8. References 9. External links 9.1. Technology Accessibility Disabilities The disability rights movement advocates equal access to social, political, and economic life, which includes not only physical access, but access to the same tools, services, organizations, and facilities which we all pay for. While it is often used to describe facilities or amenities to assist people with disabilities, as in wheelchair accessible, the term can extend to braille signage, wheelchair ramps, elevators, audio signals at pedestrian crossings, walkway contours, website design, and so on. Various countries have legislation requiring physical accessibility which are, in order of enactment, in the U.S. under the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, new public and private business construction generally must be accessible. Existing private businesses are required to increase the accessibility of their facilities when making any other renovations in proportion to the cost of other renovations. The U.S. Access Board is a federal agency committed to accessible design for people with disabilities. The Job Accommodation Network discusses accommodations for people with disabilities in the workplace. Many states in the U.S. have their own disability laws. In Australia, Disability Discrimination Act 1992 has numerous provisions for accessibility. In the UK, the Disability Discrimination Act 1995 has numerous provisions for accessibility. In South Africa, the Promotion of Equality and the Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act 2000 has numerous provisions for accessibility. In Ontario, Canada, the Ontarians with Disabilities Act of 2001 is meant to improve the identification, removal, and prevention of barriers faced by persons with disabilities. In transportation, 
Accessibility refers to the ease of reaching destinations. People who are in places that are highly accessible can reach many other activities or destinations quickly. People in inaccessible places can reach many fewer places in the same amount of time. A measure that is often used to measure accessibility in a traffic analysis zone I is accessibility I equals the sum of J opportunities J times F times C I J where I equals the index of origin zones, J equals the index of destination zones, F times C I J equals the function of generalized travel costs so that nearer or less expensive places are weighted more than farther or more expensive places. For non-motorized mode of transport, such as walking or cycling, the generalized travel cost may include additional factors such as safety or gradient. Automobile accessibility also refers to the ease of use by disabled people. Accessibility planning in the United Kingdom, the Department for Transport have mandated that each local authority produce an accessibility plan that is incorporated in their local transport plan. An accessibility plan sets out how each local authority plans to improve access to employment, learning, health care, food shops, and other services of local importance, particularly for disadvantaged groups and areas. Accessibility targets are defined in the accessibility plans. These are often distance or time to access services by different modes of transport, including walking, cycling, or public transport. Accessibility planning was introduced as a result of the report Making Connections, Final Report on Transport and Social Exclusion. This report was the result of research carried out by the Social Exclusion Unit. Low floor. A significant development in transportation and public transport in particular to achieve accessibility is to move to low floor vehicles. In a low floor vehicle, access to part or all of the passenger cabin is unobstructed from one or more entrances by the presence of steps, enabling easier access for the infirm or people with pushchairs. A further aspect may be that the entrance and corridors are wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair. Low floor vehicles have been developed for buses, trolley buses, and trams. Low floor in the vehicular sense is normally combined in a conceptual meaning with the normal pedestrian access from a standard curb height. However, the accessibility of a low floor vehicle also be utilized from slightly raising portions of curb at bus stops or through the use of level boarding bus rapid transit stations or tram stops. The combination of access from the curb was a technological development of the 1990s as step-free interior layouts for buses had existed in some cases for decades, with entrance steps being introduced as chassis designs and overall height regulations changed. Housing Most existing and new housing, even in the wealthiest nations, lack basic accessibility features unless the designated immediate occupant of a home currently has a disability. However, there are some initiatives to change typical residential practices so that new homes incorporate basic access features such as zero-step entries and door widths adequate for wheelchairs to pass through. Occupational therapists are a professional group skilled in the assessment and making of recommendations to improve access to homes. They are involved in both the adaptation of existing housing to provide accessibility and in the design of future housing. Great Britain applies the most widespread application of home access to date. In 1999, Parliament passed Section M, an amendment to residential building regulations requiring basic access in all new homes. In the United States, the 1988 amendments to the Fair Housing Act added people with disabilities as well as familial status to the classes already protected by law from discrimination, race, color, sex, religion, and country of origin. Among the protection for people with disabilities in the 1988 amendments are seven construction requirements for all multifamily buildings 
of more than four units, first occupied after March 13, 1991. These seven requirements are as follows. 1. An accessible building entrance on an accessible route. 2. Accessible common and public use areas. 3. Doors usable by a person in a wheelchair. 4. Accessible route into and through the dwelling unit. 5. Light switches, electrical outlets, thermostats, and other environmental controls in accessible locations. 6. Reinforced walls in the bathroom for later installation of grab bars. 7. Usable kitchens and bathrooms. In spite of these advancements, the housing types where most people in the United States reside, single-family homes, are not covered by the Americans with Disabilities Act. The Fair Housing Act, or any other federal law with the exception of the small percentage of publicly funded homes impacted by Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. As a result, the great majority of new single-family homes replicate the barriers in existing homes. The broad concept of universal design is relevant to housing as it is to all aspects of the built environment. Furthermore, a visitability movement begun grassroots disability advocates in the 1980 focuses specifically on changing construction practices in new housing. This movement, a network of interested people working in their locales, works on educating, passing laws, and spurring voluntary home access initiatives with the intention that the basic access became a routine part of new home construction. Telecommunications and IT Access Another dimension of accessibility is the ability to access information and services by minimizing the barriers of distance and cost, as well as the usability of the interface. In many countries, this has led to initiatives, laws, and regulations that aim toward providing universal access to the Internet and to phone systems at reasonable cost to citizens. Currently, there are a few major movements to coordinate a set of guidelines for accessibility for the web. The first and most well-known is the Web Accessibility Initiative, WAI, which is part of the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C. This organization developed the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG 1.0, which explains how to make web content accessible to people with disabilities. Web content generally refers to the information in a web page or web application including text, images, forms, sound, and such. More specific definitions are available in the WCAG documents. The WCAG is separated into three levels of, com of compliance, A, AA, and AAA. Each level requires a stricter set of conformance guidelines, such as different versions of HTML, transitional versus strict, and other techniques that need to be incorporated into your code before accomplishing validation. Online tools such as Watchfire Web XACT Engine or the Emerjo Web Compliance Manager will allow users to submit their website, automatically run it through the WCAG guidelines, and produce a report stating whether or not they conform to each level of compliance. Adobe Dreamweaver also offers plugins which allow web developers to test these guidelines on their work from within the program. Another source of web accessibility guidelines comes from the U.S. government. Section 508 of the U.S. Rehabilitation Act is a comprehensive set of rules des designed to help web designers make their sites accessible. They have also developed a website where you can take an online training course for free to learn about these rules. In general, for a website to comply with accessibility standards, they should have at least the following. X HTML validation from W3C for the page's content. CSS validation from the W3C for the page's layout. At least WAI-AA, preferably AAA compliance with the WAI's WCAG. Compliance with all the guidelines from the Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. 
access keys built into the HTML, semantic web markup, a high contrast version of the site for individuals with low vision, alternative media for any multimedia used on the site, video, flash, audio, etc. Another good idea is for websites to include a web accessibility statement on the site. This page details the accessible status of the page, lists access keys, and can display which validations have been achieved for the site, as well as include their pledge for accessibility. Meetings and conference access. Meetings and conferences should consider the needs of all of their participants. Checklists, such as this, may make it easier to identify specific needs. Mobility access. Wheelchair accessible transportation, reserved parking, barrier-free meeting rooms, restrooms, podiums, speakers platform, handicap accessible lodging. Hearing access. Advanced copies of papers, an assistive listening system, sign language interpreters, a quiet place to gather for social conversation, a quieter space that is still visible to others, should be reserved at social events or dinners so that people who are hard of hearing may go there to talk with their colleagues. TTY access or internet-based TRS. Site access. Large print or braille copies of the program and papers. A student volunteer to guide and describe the artwork, computer work, etc. A tech to help with assistive devices and screen readers, e.g. JAWS reader. Gloves to touch three-dimensional work, where permissible. Other issues. Notification if social events include flashing lights and noises. These can cause seizures, so either avoid them or announce them ahead of time. Notices asking participants to refrain from allergy-producing problems, e.g. perfumes. Inform food providers of food allergies, e.g. peanuts, shellfish, etc. Referral information for local personal care attendant agencies. Referral information for veterinarian care for service animals. Access to a place to rest during the day if the conference venue is far from the lodgings. Test accessibility. With the passage of the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001, student accountability in essential content areas such as reading, mathematics, and science has become a major area of focus in educational reform. As a result, test developers have needed to create tests to ensure all students, including those with special needs, e.g. students identified with disabilities, are given the opportunity to demonstrate proficiency on the state assessments. Currently, states are permitted to develop two different types of tests in addition to the standard grade level assessments to target students with special needs. First, the alternate assessment may be used to report proficiency for up to 1% of students in a state. Second, new regulations permit the use of alternate assessments based on modified academic achievement standards to report proficiency for up to 2% of students in a state. To ensure these new tests generate results that permit valid inferences about student performance, they must be accessible to as many individuals as possible. The Test Accessibility and Modification Inventory TAMI, was developed for this purpose. Integrating principles of universal design, assessment accessibility, cognitive load theory, and research on item writing and test development, the TAMI is a decision-making tool designed to facilitate a comprehensive analysis of tests and test items to enhance their accessibility for all students. The TAMI is a non-commercial instrument that has been made achievable to all state assessment directors and testing companies. This recording and all the text contained in it is available under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at http colon slash slash www.gnu.org slash copy left.